Hey guys, this is Peter from 305 Drone Guys. Here's just a quick video on how to set up the new Immersion RC Vortex to run on Futaba. So I know there's a couple questions on people on how to set it up because this does not support SBUS. It only supports uh, CPPM. So there's a couple different ways to get Futaba to talk with someone that supports CPPM. So here's a quick video to show you how to do that. This is my personal quad. Um, we got it set up flies great so just uh follow it through all right guys so if you're going to use futaba there are pretty much two ways that you can get futaba to work with this quad so you can either use uh, a receiver from futaba that supports sbus and then get an sbus to cppm converter which i will show you just now Okay, or I actually found that uh, FR Sky actually makes a receiver. Well, they make a few, but they make a receiver that talks, you know, directly with Futaba and supports CPPM. So this is the receiver that I'm talking about. It's actually the Delta 8. It actually works with uh, Futaba high tech and works with uh, obviously FR Sky product. So this is the receiver. That's what I chose to use. I didn't want to use a converter. I figured it might slow things down, you know, as far as uh, latency. And I figured that it would just add extra components. So to make it simple, this receiver is actually really cheap. So you can just add the receiver. It binds directly, it takes two seconds. And uh, as you can see, it's a stock cable that comes out of the Vortex, plugs right in, and you have no problems. Besides that, however, there are a couple different things you have to do with Futaba to set up in the radio itself. To work with the wizard to set you know when you use the OSD though the wizard does not support server reversing and you know certain things are backward on at least on this Futaba radio so I'll show you how to what channels you have to reverse and uh, you have to actually change some of the endpoints to be able to get into the menu because actually to enter the menu for the this quad you have to have throttle all the way down into the left but if you don't have the right endpoints it'll actually think you're not going all the way left and it won't let you enter into the menu and adjust things. So I will show you um, exactly what endpoints, I've actually done it on a few radios, so I know the endpoints are exact and they work really well. That's for the 14SG. I believe also for the Super 8, it's the same, but uh, these settings are definitely work with the 14SG. So just wanna show you those. And uh, I will pretty much walk you through it. I'll pull up on the OSD and show you exactly everything. Okay, so here's a, a brand new Vortex you know right out of the box the first thing I want to tell you is you know just look it over make sure everything is okay check all the components are in one piece and then I would recommend to take off the props uh, when you're going through the menu and especially setting things up sometimes I actually happened to me the motors armed so I already had the props off so it was no issue but make sure the props are off and your antenna is actually plugged in you know you don't want to have these transmitters powered on without the antenna so let's go ahead and do that all right guys as you can see I removed the propellers I also took off the nuts and I have installed the antenna so now we will show how to set up the Delta 8 receiver there's a couple things you have to do physically to the receiver to make it uh, set up correctly and you know the next step after that I'll show you how to set up the radio if you're going to use um, a CPPM to S bus converter you can skip this step and just go straight to the radio setup but um, for now we will show you how to set up the receiver so I'm going to put this to the side right now and this is the Delta 8 receiver. So just take it out of the bag. Simple, you know, with two antennas. It actually is gonna come with two tiny little jumpers. So for Futaba, as you can see, there's seven and eight. You're gonna take this jumper and we're on the very top side, on the, sig on the signal side of the servo cable, you're gonna jump channel seven and eight. So now this receiver is actually locked into S FHSS, which is you know Futaba's uh, frequency, so now it will only work. It will not bind to the other two. So the next jumper is actually you know allow it to support uh, CPPM because right now it's just going to use regular channels one through six because obviously seven and eight are blocked. So we take this next jumper and we jump the same spot, but channel three and channel four. Now the rest of the channels are, are useless and we're just gonna use uh, CPPM. And now you'll have all your eight channels outputted, but it's only gonna be outputted through CPPM. So if you take your Vortex 
all you have to do is take this and plug it directly, you know, with the white cable up, because that's what this receiver is, signal on top, and plug it directly in, and it's set up. You can mount this on the top or the bottom. I, you know, it's nice to mount on the bottom for protection, but you block the LED, so we're gonna mount it on top, and uh, we, wrote, we wrote the wires forward. You'll see in my quad exactly how I did it, but that's how you're gonna mount it. And uh, the next process now is gonna show you how to bind the radio. All right, guys, so here we have our 14SG and the Vortex. So the first thing you're gonna do is make a new model. I already have one labeled Vortex, but uh, I'll walk you through it this way. You know, just in case you don't remember or you know you don't know how we'll make a new model so just gonna select the model that you have there you know it should be new one if it's a brand new radio or if it's a uh, you know a model that you previously made you're just gonna select the model and then you're gonna go down to new and hold it down for a second and you know multi rotor type is fine and you're gonna select the you know if you're gonna use this Delta 8 receiver we're gonna select SH FHSS. It's already there because that's where my previous model was, but you'll see there's a couple of them, so just select until you see, you know, the correct system, which is that one. Get out of the system. Okay. And then you can uh, name your, you know, vortex or whatever you want to use. So for right now, we're just going to leave it as new. Now that the radio is set up, we're just going to slide it out of the way. Okay, so now that the radio is still on, you know, right now the process we're going to do is going to bind the... 14SG to this Delta 8 receiver. Now, there's the the bind button. All you're gonna do is you're gonna press this down while you turn it on, and here's the LED. The LED will actually turn red and green once it's bound, and once it's bound, you're just gonna shut everything down and power it back on, and everything should work perfect. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let me get this a little bit closer. It's kind of hard to do it without blocking this LED. There we go. So now it's red. And it's hard to tell, but it's actually red and green. Let's see if you can see that in there. I'm not sure, but however it is. So once that's all set up, you're just gonna go ahead and unplug. Power down the Futaba. Turn on your radio. Turn on this. Okay, everything's bound. So now what we have to do is we have to set the right endpoints on the transmitter so everything will be set up when we actually do the setup wizard so what I'm going to tell you to do now is go ahead and power down the vortex and we're going to go through step by step on um, what channels to reverse and what endpoints to set for each channel so to do that just hit the link button twice let's do the reversing first okay so now we're on reverse so let's select reverse and what we're going to reverse it's just the elevator, so go ahead and reverse that, and the throttle, and reverse that. Those are the only two you have to reverse, so once we reverse those two, we can actually uh, exit out. And now what we're going to do is set the endpoints. The, the reason why they set the endpoints is because the, the flight controller on here, which uses clean flight, is expecting a range of throttle from, uh, I believe it's uh, 1,000 to 2,000. So... This actually doesn't uh, put that out. It's a little bit like 1100 to 1900, I believe, is the number that it's, it, you know, what it thinks. So it doesn't think you have the full range. So what we're gonna do is set the endpoints so the full range is actually recognized by the flight controller that's on board. So we're just gonna go to endpoint. The first one, which is Eleron, you're gonna select the endpoint for here, which can be 124. It's too far. And I'll put a link in, the, I'll put a, you know, in the description in the bottom you'll have the exact numbers for each channel so 124 um, this will be 114 and that's actually going to be opposite for the elevator because we reversed it so it makes sense so this is going to be 114 and this will be 124 and throttle is also reversed so it's going to stay with this 114 124 and then the rudder since it was uh, actually normal so go back to the 124 114 so 124 114 okay 
the last step, you know, once that's all set up, there's one more thing we have to do. So once we exit out all this, the last thing we're going to do is set up our function, you know, uh, for which stick or which, you know, input we want to adjust for uh, flight modes. So the last thing I set it up for SC, which is the, you know, the taller of the two on the right hand top corner. So we will go to function. We will select channel five and I will put it on SC. You know, that's where I like it. And you can put it, you know, wherever you like it on the radio, but that's where I'm setting up mine. So once that's set up, we can actually exit out of this. And now the radio is uh, set up correctly. If you want, you can also set up a timer. Um, I found with a 1300, you know, flying pretty hard. I get three minutes, so you could set it for that. The OSD on this unit is actually very, very powerful, so you can uh, just rely on the OSD, but the timer doesn't hurt. And uh, I've set it for three minutes on mine, so just one more thing. So now what we're going to do is there's one more step we have to do. Um, we have to actually go through all the wizard for the, for the Vortex. So it's actually pretty straightforward, so we'll do that right now. Okay, so now with our radio still on, we're going to go ahead and power the Vortex up, and uh, we're going to go through the wizard and set up the transmitter. So just power that on, make sure again all the props are off. You can use your goggles or your monitor. It's set right now to transmit um, Immersion RC or Fat Shark, you know, channel one. So if you have your goggles set for that, go ahead and tune in and go ahead and set up the wizard. So I'll show it to you in one second what I see on my screen, so this way we can... Um, Get it going. So, turn on my DVR. Okay, so it's going to ask for the wizard. So it's going to ask me to center all my controls. So let's do that right there. Okay. Move the roll control to the right. Excuse me, to the left and hold. So we'll do that. Move the yaw to the left and hold. Let's do that. Bring back to neutral, throttle to the minimum, back to the center, move the pitch stick back and hold. Now we're going to hold the left stick back and to the left, bring it back to neutral. Now we're going to level the quad, which is on the table, the table is pretty level, so we're good with that. Just move the right stick back and hold. All done. So now let it uh, just process what's going on. And this is the basic menu. Uh, I still have the cap on, but you see this is the basic OSD, what you're gonna see. You know, you have your voltage in the lower left-hand corner, how many uh, milliamps uh, you're using per minute, or at least estimate. The current draw in the bottom center. Uh, on the right, on the bottom, you're gonna have uh, how many milliamps you use total. Just above that, you have the total flight time. And on the right, you have the estimated total flight time. So. You know, usually it gives me three minutes on 1300s. On the top left, you have your frequency, which is uh, 5740, which is, you know, Fat Shark Channel 1. And on the right, you have your which mode you're in, which is in Horizon. So if we actually switch that, you have Angle and Acro. And those will change depending on how you set it up, but, you know, that's how you, what you'll see. And just to the left of that, you'll have how high in meters, you know, that the quad is flying. So once we set up that, we're actually gonna go down and then go into the menu. So to do that, you just have to hold throttle all the way down and to the left. And you see, since we set up the endpoints correctly, it's all right into place. We don't have to do anything special. And from here, we'll be able to adjust all the things. So there's tons of videos out there to show you what each one of these do. You do. So I'm just gonna, you know, real quick, you know, just show you, you know, which each one. All right, and to exit out, just gonna tap left again. So here you go, back to the main menu. So from here, if we actually hold down right, you know, you hear the motor's arm, or you can probably see him, and uh, disarm him. See, so the radio set up 100%. There's lastly, there's one more thing we have to do, and that is to plug the the Vortex into uh, the Clean Flight software, and we have to retell it what center is, because as I told you, mentioned before, 
for a center, uh, well, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but for center on Futaba, it's not 1500, it's actually 1520. So we have to go and plug this in directly into Clean Flight and uh, confirm that all the endpoints that we set reach the, the 1000 to 2000, and then we're going to retell Clean Flight that center for all my control sticks is 1520. And after that, you are good to go. Um, if you already have Clean Flight, then you know where to go, but if not, all you have to do to get the Clean Flight application is to install Google Chrome if you already don't have it. And then once you do that, what you're going to do is actually just, just if you just Google Clean Flight application, you'll just click right here, take it to the web store, and uh, you'll just install app to the Google Chrome. But since you already did it, it's just going to tell me to launch the app. So let's go ahead and do that. And once we do that, all we have to do is, you know, the USB cable, the vortex where the light controller is, well, the LEDs, excuse me, are. Just going to plug it in. And then we have to power it. So if we just go ahead and power the vortex. Okay, so it might be defaulted to Bluetooth. So what we're going to do is just select the very top, I mean, the, the first uh, USB modem. So just click on that. And then since it's powered on, just hit connect. And you'll see it's connected. So if you go to configuration, what you have to do is see where it says middle throttle RC center value. We're going to change that to 1520. This way it will match what our Futaba thinks it has. And we will go all the way to save. And then it'll reboot as you saw. Now it's ready. If we go to our receiver, you'll see. It's exactly at 1520, 1520. If we center our throttle, it should be yeah, really close. See, 15, 1500, a little more. 1520, right there, 1521. So the minimum throttle right now should be right at 1000. And you see 999. You know, let's just use the other sticks 999, 999, 999. And the maximum should be right at 2000. Oh. See, I armed it. So, 1998, which is pretty much there. 1998, full throttle. Give it a second, 1998. And then if you give it full yaw, you can see 1998. So, bring everything back down. And uh, just hit save one more time, and you're actually good to go. So, from now, you'll be able to, you know, start flying your Vortex. All right, guys, so this is my Vortex. What I've done is, you know, same thing. I've installed a Delta 8 receiver. I actually put the antennas, you know, facing forward, and I put them on a zip tie and just heat shrink them to the zip tie, so this way they're sticking out high as possible, you know, keep the range and still very flexible, and I won't lose them. I've actually got rid of the gem fan for props. I never even flew with them, to tell the truth. These are going to be the the HQ five by four point five bull nose props, and uh, I changed them all the way around, obviously. The, uh, the first batch of the Vortex comes with a cone nut. I removed that and I just used a 4, four millimeter um, nut with nylon in them. You can find them, you know, any hobby shop will have them because they're the standard for most RC cars. Um, I 3D printed them out to angle the Mobius. And uh, I figured this is only at 15 degrees. I think you need a little bit more, especially since the camera can take up to 45. So when you angle a lot, even with the Mobius with the wide angle lens, might not be enough. So, you know. Hopefully they'll come out with the mount soon to mount the Mobius, you know, with more angle. But at the moment, this is all I have. But it flew great. I really enjoyed it. You know, I think the next step maybe later on we, we might try the Cobra 2204s, 2000 KV or 1960 KV. Let's get a little more power out of it. But it flew great. I'm very happy with it. And uh, now that you have your radio set up with Futaba, you should have no problem. Get in the air, get some laps through it, and enjoy it. Also, you can check out our other videos. We'll have some videos posted to the Vortex soon. We have um, tons of videos on there now from previous quads that we fly around. And, you know, you can check some of our quads and some of our locations. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the description below. And I uh, hope this helps.